Hi, welcome to Farm Day Guru. In this video, we are going to talk about introduction to clinical pharmacokinetics. And yes, it's a fast track video. The study material we are showing is available in our website www.farmdguru.com. Let's go to our topic: introduction to clinical pharmacokinetics. Let's see the definitions. This is the definition of pharmacokinetics. I want you to divide this into two parts. This is one part and this is another part. Let's see the first part. Pharmacokinetics is defined as the kinetics of drug absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, ADME. Here, pharmacokinetic studies means what happens to a drug in the body after it is taken, focusing on four key processes. Absorption means how the drug enters the bloodstream. Distribution means how it spreads through the body. Metabolism means how it is broken down often in the liver and excretion means how it is eliminated from the body these processes collectively known as adme now let's see the second part and the relationship with the pharmacologic therapeutic or toxicological response in man and animals which means these adme processes help us understand the relationship between the drug's journey in the body and its effects which can be pharmacologic how it works therapeutic its benefits or toxic its harmful effects for example when a person takes a drug it may produce a desired therapeutic effect or cause toxicity by studying adme we can get to know the relationship between them hence we can better understand and predict these outcomes clinical pharmacokinetics is about applying the principles of pharmacokinetics to ensure that drugs are used safely and effectively for each patient it involves understanding how a drug behaves in the body adme and using this knowledge to adjust the dose and treatment strategy for individual patients clinical pharmacokinetics is the application of pharmacokinetic methods to drug therapy which means this clinical pharmacokinetics helps us decide the best way to use pharmacokinetic methods to improve a patient's treatment that is drug therapy it involves a multidisciplinary approach to individually optimized dosing strategies based on the patient's disease state and patient specific considerations here multidisciplinary approach is nothing but team effort it's a team effort involving doctors pharmacists nurses and other healthcare professionals by keeping in mind the patient's disease and personal factors like age gender organ function and genetics they work together to create the best dosing strategies pharmacokinetics is also applied to therapeutic drug monitoring tdm for very potent drugs such as those with a narrow therapeutic range in order to optimize efficacy and to prevent any adverse toxicity for these drugs it is necessary to monitor the patient either by monitoring plasma drug concentrations example theophylline or by monitoring a specific pharmacodynamic endpoint such as prothrombin clotting time example warfarin as we already discussed pharmacokinetics are applicable to tdm studies the goal of these pharmacokinetic studies is to give the patient the right dose tdm studies are done to make sure the patient is in the right dosing range doctors and other healthcare professionals continuously monitor the patient here for powerful drugs with a narrow therapeutic range where the difference between an effective dose and a toxic dose is very small clinical pharmacokinetics is crucial example drugs like theophylline require regular blood tests to measure drug levels in the plasma for drugs like warfarin we monitor the effect example clotting time to ensure it works well without causing harm the influence of many diseases on drug disposition is not adequately studied age gender genetic and ethnic differences can also result in pharmacokinetic differences that may affect the outcome of drug therapy here drug disposition means the journey of the drug from the moment it's taken to when it's eliminated which includes adme suppose if the patient has multiple diseases the effects of these diseases on drug disposition are not fully understood or well studied this creates a gap in knowledge and can make it challenging to predict how certain diseases might alter a drug's behavior in the body along with diseases age gender genetic and ethnic differences can also result in pharmacokinetic differences that may affect the outcome of drug therapy however clinical pharmacokinetic studies and therapeutic drug monitoring tdm 
can help address this issue. Suppose, take four patients with fever. We gave paracetamol to all four patients. But the fourth patient has liver abnormality. So, the drug disposition, that is, absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of these three patients is different compared to the fourth patient. The influence of liver abnormality changes drug disposition in this patient and we don't have proper knowledge. So, we cannot predict the drug outcome. In the same manner, we cannot predict the drug therapy outcome of patients with different age, gender, genetic and ethnic differences. Clinical pharmacokinetics provides tools to compensate for this lack of knowledge by focusing on individual patient needs. Population pharmacokinetics Study of pharmacokinetic differences of drugs in various population groups is termed population pharmacokinetics. Population pharmacokinetics helps us understand how different groups of people process drugs, leading to more personalized and effective treatments. By studying these differences, healthcare providers can ensure that each population group gets the safest and most appropriate drug therapy. Plasma Drug Concentration Time Profile a direct relationship exists between the concentration of the drug at the site of action and the concentration of the drug in plasma. Because the drug is distributed evenly throughout the body, the concentration of the drug in plasma gives us a measurable way to estimate how much drug is likely present at the target site. A typical plasma drug concentration time curve is obtained as follows. See the graph. Cmax refers to the maximum concentration of a drug in the bloodstream after it's been administered. It's the point where the drug reaches its highest level in the body. Sometimes, it's called peak height concentration or maximum drug concentration, emphasizing that this is the highest amount of drug in the blood. The concentration of the drug at Cmax is typically measured in micrograms per milliliter, MCG ml. This gives an idea of how much drug is present in the blood at its peak. For the drug to be effective, Cmax should be above the minimum effective concentration MEC, but below the maximum safe concentration, MSC, to avoid toxicity. Tmax refers to the time it takes for a drug to reach its peak concentration in the bloodstream after it's administered, typically extravascularly, meaning outside the vein, such as orally, via injection, or other routes. TMAX gives us an idea of how quickly a drug begins to act. If a drug reaches TMAX fast, it may start working sooner which is important for conditions where quick relief is needed, like pain or anxiety. AUC is the total area under the plasma concentration time curve, which plots the concentration of the drug in the blood over time. It represents the total amount of drug that enters the bloodstream and is available for the body to use after it is taken. AUC is typically expressed in MCG ML times hours. This means it's a combination of drug concentration, MCG ML, and time, hours, giving us a measure of how long and how much of the drug was present in the body. Now let's look at some pharmacodynamic parameters. Minimum effective concentration, MEC. The lowest concentration of a drug in the bloodstream required to produce a therapeutic or desired effect. If the concentration is below MEC, the drug won't show the therapeutic effect. For antibiotics, as we need to inhibit the growth of microorganisms, the term changes to MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration. Let's see. It is defined as the minimum concentration of the drug in plasma required to produce the therapeutic effect. Example, for a painkiller, the MEC is the minimum drug level needed to start reducing pain. Below this level, the drug won't work. In case of antibiotics, the term minimum inhibitory concentration is used. MIC describes the minimum concentration of antibiotic in plasma required to kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Example, if an antibiotic like penicillin doesn't reach its MIC, bacteria may continue to grow or develop resistance. Maximum safe concentration, MSC, is also called the minimum toxic concentration, MTC. It is the concentration of drug in plasma above which adverse or unwanted effects are precipitated. What it means, the highest concentration of a drug in the bloodstream that is safe. Beyond this level, the drug may cause toxicity or unwanted side effects. Example, for a blood thinner like warfarin, concentrations above MSC could cause dangerous bleeding. Concentration of the drug above MSC is said to be in the toxic level. 
subtherapeutic level the concentration of drug below mec is said to be in the subtherapeutic level what it means when the drug concentration in the blood is below mec it's called subtherapeutic at this level the drug will not provide any benefit onset of action the beginning of pharmacologic response is called the onset of action it occurs when the plasma drug concentration just exceeds the required mec what it means the start of the drug's effect it happens when the drug concentration in the blood just crosses mec example after taking a headache tablet the onset of action is when you first start feeling relief onset time it is the time required for the drug to start producing pharmacologic response it corresponds to the time for the plasma concentration to reach mec after administration of the drug what it means the time it takes for a drug to begin producing its effect this corresponds to how long it takes the plasma concentration to reach mec example if you take an antacid it may take 30 minutes for the drug to reduce stomach acidity so the onset time is 30 minutes duration of action the time period for which the plasma concentration of the drug remains above the mec level is called the duration of drug action what it means the time period during which the drug's concentration in the blood remains above mec and continues to provide its effect example a long acting painkiller might provide relief for 12 hours this is its duration of action intensity of action it is the maximum pharmacologic response produced by the peak plasma concentration of the drug it is also called the peak response what it means the maximum effect of a drug directly related to the peak plasma concentration cmax example for a sedative intensity of action refers to how strongly it makes you feel drowsy therapeutic range the concentration of drug between mec and msc represents the therapeutic range what it means the range of drug concentration in the blood between mec and msc within this range the drug is both safe and effective below this range is equal to ineffective above this range is equal to toxic example for insulin the therapeutic range ensures glucose levels are controlled without causing hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia rate of reaction the rate of reaction refers to how quickly a chemical or biological process occurs in pharmacokinetics it describes how drugs are absorbed distributed metabolized or eliminated from the body the rate can follow one of three types of reactions zero order reaction first order reaction and mixed order reaction the rate of a reaction or process is defined as the velocity at which it proceeds and can be described as either zero order or first order or mixed order let's look at this reaction here magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide and it happens in 5 minutes if the concentration of magnesium or oxygen increases the magnesium oxide formation happens and if that happens in let's say 3 minutes we can say it follows a first order reaction because the speed of the reaction changes if the concentration of magnesium or oxygen increases and the magnesium oxide formation happens at 5 minutes we can say it follows a zero order reaction why because even though we increase the concentration of reactants the speed does not increase it stays constant so zero order reaction is equal to zero change in speed obviously first order reaction is equal to change in speed and if the reactions follow both first order and zero order reactions we can say they follow mixed order reactions compartment models compartment models are used in pharmacokinetics to simplify the complex processes of drug distribution and elimination by grouping tissues into compartments physiologic pharmacokinetic models are frequently used in describing drug distribution in animals because tissue samples are easily available for assay on the other hand tissue samples are often not available for human subjects so most physiological models assume an average set of blood flow for individual subjects okay physiologic models use actual tissue measurements to determine drug distribution which are more common in animal studies compartment models rely on mathematical assumptions about blood flow and tissue interaction which are used for human studies where tissue sampling is harder why use compartment models compartment models simplify how drugs are distributed metabolized and eliminated in the body 
by grouping tissues with similar properties into compartments. These models help us predict how a drug moves within the body over time. One compartment model, what it means? The body is treated as a single, uniform compartment where the drug distributes instantly after administration. Two compartment model, what it means? The body is divided into central compartment, highly perfused organs, example, heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, brain, peripheral compartment, poorly perfused tissues, example, muscle, fat, skin. This key concept here, or the drug enters the central compartment first, then gradually moves to the peripheral compartment. Elimination occurs mainly from the central compartment. Multi-compartment model, what it means? More than two compartments are used to describe drug distribution. Each compartment represents tissues with different affinities for the drug. The plasma concentration time profile shows multiple exponential declines, reflecting distribution to multiple compartments. Here, exponential declines means, in a graph, we can observe a specific pattern of decrease over time, where the rate of decline is proportional to the amount left. In pharmacokinetics, this is a common way to describe how drugs are eliminated or distributed in the body. In compartment models, within each compartment, the drug is considered to be uniformly distributed. Mammillary model. It is the most common in pharmacokinetics. It has a central compartment connected to one or more peripheral compartments like satellites. It simulates how organs directly interact with the blood plasma. Catenary model. The catenary model consists of compartments joined to one another like the compartments of a train. Less common because it doesn't reflect how most body organs connect to the bloodstream. See the example. Apparent volume of distribution. It is defined as that volume of plasma in which the total amount of drug in the body would be required to be dissolved in order to reflect the drug concentration attained in plasma. It is nothing but the theoretical volume in which the total amount of drug in the body would need to be dissolved to achieve the observed plasma concentration. This is the formula to calculate volume of distribution, where x is equal to total amount of drug in the body. CP is equal to drug concentration in plasma. Half-life. The time required to reduce the plasma concentration to one half its initial value is defined as the half-life, TA half. It is nothing but the time it takes for the plasma drug concentration to decrease by half. This is the formula to calculate half-life, where K is the elimination rate constant. Clearance. Drug clearance, CL, is defined as the volume of plasma in the vascular compartment cleared of drug per unit time by the processes of metabolism and excretion. Drug can be cleared by renal excretion or by metabolism or both. With respect to the kidney and liver, etc., clearances are additive. That is, which is simply the volume of plasma cleared of the drug per unit time through metabolism or excretion. This is the formula. Renal clearance is clearance via kidneys. Example, excreting unmetabolized drugs like aminoglycosides. Non-renal clearance is clearance via liver metabolism or other pathways. Example, metabolized drugs like propranolol. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next video.